Ooh, okay, okay. Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Chap, and this is the ASUS ZenBook 14 OLED. And while its predecessor may have only come out six months ago during the summer, we already have a refresh, and it's a pretty big update both outside and inside. <laughs> because this is the very first laptop I've got my hands on to come with Intel's brand new 14th generation Meteor Lake processors. And I have the new Intel Core Ultra 7 uh, 155H in this guy. And this year it's all about the graphics with the new Intel Arc integrated GPU and also a new NPU for the neural processing, the Intel AI boost, so lots to talk about. But first, a big thank you to ASUS for sending this over for me to test. It is just one of a handful of review units in the world right now, and also very kindly sponsoring this video. Now, although you can actually buy this from today, well, at least in the US, Canada, and India, I think other countries are coming soon. So before Christmas, which is pretty impressive for the new generation of hardware, uh, this actual review sample I've got here is a pre-production version. Now I can run tests and benchmarks, all my own tests, all my own results, and I will share that with you in a minute because they are pretty interesting, but I do have to caveat that this is not a quite final retail model. But before we nerd out on some 14th gen goodness, ASUS have made some other very tasty upgrades to the ZenBook 14 OLED, and the very first thing you'll notice is the size. Now sadly I don't have the predecessor model here to compare it directly to, they've reduced the weight from 1.39 kilograms to just 1.2, so roughly 200 grams lighter, and they've also slimmed it down from 16.9 millimeters to 14.9 millimeters. So a couple hundred grams less, a couple of millimeters thinner, it's a lot more compact. But still keeping that lovely 14 inch OLED screen, the same 75 watt hour battery, same 180 degree hinge and touchscreen, of course, uh, and also the same pretty good range of ports given the size, including two Thunderbolt 4s, a full size type A USB, headphone jack, and an HDMI 2.1. Obviously an SD card reader would have been nice, but not too bad. It comes in this blue color or silver, foggy silver as they call it, although I do think I would prefer the silver as I have noticed the lid on this get a little bit fingerprinty. I say a bit. Hmm. Same lovely backlit keyboard with what ASUS call ultra quiet keys. Your friends and family around you when you're working on this will definitely appreciate that. And of course the touchpad down here also doubles as a numpad with the press of a button. As for the screen, we have a 14 inch OLED touchscreen with a 3K resolution, so that's 2880 by 1880, but they have bumped the refresh rate from 90 to 120 hertz, which makes everything feel smoother. And also it's a good deal brighter now. ASUS quoted the previous model as offering 400 nits in SDR and 550 in HDR, but I measured this at a hair under 500 nits in SDR and around 750 in HDR. My only complaint is the screen is very, very glossy, and also there's a little bit of wobble to that hinge. Up top we have a 1080p webcam with an IR sensor beside it so you can use the Windows Hello face unlocking even in low light or at night. You can also see I've got the auto framing turned on and we'll talk more about that in a second. But I also do appreciate we have a privacy shutter up here. Blah, 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 blah. Let's get to the good stuff, right? Let's talk about 14th gen processors. Now on the Intel side, they've had a bit of a rebrand. We've gone from say the Core i5, i7, i9 to the Core Ultra 5, Ultra 7, and Ultra 9. Although similarly, the higher the number, the higher the tier of chip. But just as importantly as ever, is the suffix. Intel have dropped the P series, which for the last couple of generations have sat between the U and the H. So this new ZenBook 14 OLED comes in Ultra 5, Ultra 7, Ultra 9 options, all with Intel Arc graphics, albeit at different clock speeds. And this particular one I have here, as I say, has the Ultra 7 155H, which is bang in the middle of their new H series lineup. It's a 16 core, 22 thread processor. The new Intel Arc graphics packs in eight XE cores. We also get DX12 Ultimate support, hardware ray tracing, mesh shading, and it's better optimized for their XESS AI super sampling. The new chips also do support Wi-Fi 7, although this particular laptop is still stuck with 6E. I say stuck with barely anyone even have a 6E router, but 7 would have been nice for, you know, future proofing. But it does support AV1 encoding and decoding, which previously you'd have to have, say, an NVIDIA 40 series GPU to get. And AV1 is basically a much more efficient codec than H.264. And that's a pretty big deal for any video editors out there. The bottom line though is Intel are claiming double the performance per watt versus the previous gen. That's a big claim. Now to add a bit of context, let me bring in the LG Gram style. This has the previous 13th gen 1360p processor, the same one used in the old ZenBook 14 OLED, and also packs in 32 gigs of RAM. Different laptop, different chassis, yes, but it should give us a decent indication of how much faster 14th gen is. But in Geekbench 6, we're looking at a minimal change to the single core, although an impressive 33% uptick in multi-core. 
Although in Cinebench, we're seeing a 20% bump in single core and a whopping 113% gain in multi-core. PC Mark 10 shows a 21% overall uptick, and in Time Spy, incredibly, it's nearly three times faster overall. And in the Blender benchmark, we're looking at 22, 36, and 55% jumps respectively for each test. That's pretty huge. Now opening up Premiere Pro 24 and timing the export of my 4K60 H.264 project, it took four minutes, 32 seconds on the ZenBook versus nine minutes and 13 seconds on the LG. Variables aside, the 14th gen did it in almost half the time. But what about games? Can I finally play some AAA titles with, you know, decent settings on integrated graphics? Well, the answer is yes. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we're looking at almost double the performance at 42 FPS, and that's with high settings at 1200p. Rainbow Six Siege went from a jumpy 38 to a super smooth 79. That's over double the frame rate. So gaming is definitely possible now, although dropping to 800p might be a better option for the most demanding games. And in most cases, including Premiere Pro, we're looking at up to twice the performance year on year. That is ridiculous. Although under load and in performance mode, the temps did get quite high easily in the 90s while video editing or gaming and peaking over 100 degrees Celsius. So this can get hot both inside and outside. I'm also really surprised that actually the performance on battery isn't that much worse than on power. Usually we see a quite a big drop and that's one of the reasons I love MacBooks is generally you get a similar performance on battery, although I found that's not really the case with gaming. But with this guy, there's a sort of five to 10% drop in performance going away from the charger but that's not bad at all. So far, so good then, but we need to talk about AI. And the big push this year is for on-device AI acceleration because we've got all the things like, you know, Windows Copilot, we've got ChatGPT, you've got your Photoshop with generative fill, but that all uses cloud-based AI, which is great and generally faster. But what we're seeing now is this uh, AI acceleration locally on device, which means A, you don't need a connection to the cloud, uh, lower latency, so it's generally faster, fewer privacy concerns because nothing's leaving your laptop, and it is all done on your laptop. So now we've got our CPU, the processor, the GPU, the graphics, and the NPU, or neural processing unit. And you can see when the Intel AI boost kicks in. In this case, when I'm using some webcam studio effects, but the AI acceleration we get as a result of having this dedicated NPU makes AI tasks much faster and more efficient. And as I say, it can take some of the workload off your CPU and your GPU. But it is early days and you have to have the hardware in place to then, you know, have developers optimize their apps and games to support the AI acceleration with an MPU. So while I would not rush out and buy this purely based on the fact that it has an MPU and we have much faster and more efficient AI performance, I would consider buying this because of the improved graphics performance and also the overall upgrade to the laptop in terms of the design, the screen, and everything else as a package. The new ZenBook 14 OLED starts in the UK at 1099, and that gets you the Ultra 5 CPU, 16 gigs of RAM and 512 storage, which I think is a pretty good base spec and probably my pick of the bunch, although you can spend a little bit more to get the Ultra 7 or the Ultra 9, topping out with 32 gigs and a terabyte of storage. And overall, I think it's a lovely laptop. Beautiful screen, lovely design, nice and thin and light, solid performance, particularly in the graphics, thanks to 14th gen. And I think the price is pretty reasonable for what you're getting. And if you do fancy checking this out for yourself, I will leave links in the description below. If you've got any questions at all, drop a comment and I'll do my best to answer them. And also if there's anything else you'd like me to test on this with that new 14th gen CPU. Thank you so much for watching guys. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat. I've just realized there is a cat who's been watching me the whole time. Would you go for a MacBook or a ZenBook? What do you think?